Okay, so moving on here, and again, kind of thinking about this in terms of, of ethical systems, right? And ethical and just kind of like um, ethics in general. And, you know, accounting for the fact here that, that ethics, right? You know, I might have a certain ethical outlook on certain things, and you might have a certain ethical outlook on other things, or the same things for that matter, right? And so which one of us is right, if that even matters? Or, right, how do we kind of um, understand these differences, right? How do, can we kind of adjudicate between these two? And so this is where the thought of, of moral relativism comes into play, and this challenge, maybe that's the better word, this challenge of moral relativism comes into play. So I'm going to reference a little bit from an old textbook that I used to use because I think it does a nice job of, of focusing on, on moral relativism here, and I'll kind of unpack various snippets of text that seem kind of uh, worthwhile, okay? All right. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Sometimes, though, most complicated of all, whole moral systems contradict one another. One society absolutely forbids sex before marriage, and others encourage it. One society treats abortion as murder, and others allow abortion in the name of general welfare. One society even condones murder as an expression of individual strength and power. Another condemns any show of power and treats murder as the most heinous crime. Thus, some of our crucial questions of our time have not to do with the justification of one value system over another, but the coexistence of several value systems. How is this possible? How can we choose among them? All Are all of them equal, equally correct relative to a particular society? Here we face the problem of relativism. Okay? The thesis that values are correct only relative to a given culture. Okay. And so this is where, again, we have this kind of basis where for the fact that, that again, you know, we can think about cross-culturally, right? And so, I mean, the U.S. is, you know, the quote-unquote melting pot. There's a lot of different cultures, a lot of different voices, a lot of different outlooks as it relates to various issues within our culture, right? But I think that, you know, and I don't, I do have problem with kind of like the East and the West divide as it relates to kind of like dichotomizing cultures. I think that that's maybe a prob problematic kind of way of thinking about certain things. However, right, we can pretty safely say that like our culture in the United States is very different than the culture in Mongolia, right? That certain cultural practices in Mongolia, right, are very different than the certain cultural practices in the United States. So the question becomes, is like one of us better? Is one of us right? Is one of us wrong? Or are we just different? Okay. I'm sure that some of us would be like, yeah, we're, di we're, we're better, right? Like if the way we do stuff is the best way, right? If, because if it wasn't the best way, we wouldn't do it. And I'm sure that there are Mongolians that are probably making the same claims. Our way of life is better and more preferable than other ways of life, okay? But we still kind of see some of the issue there, okay? And the issue here with this kind of like relativist outlook is what's known as moral relativism. So with that being said, again, some more text just to kind of offer um, some ways of thinking about, I think, this, this difficulty of, of moral relativism. A nice cue that wasn't going to work. Okay, here we go. All right. Ethel, ethical relativism begins with the observation that very the different cultures have radically different moral systems. Okay? Arranged marriages for some, uh, pardon me, arranged marriages for very young girls are deemed right in some societies, but disapproved in ours. In some cultures, the appropriate thing for people to do when they have become too old to be productive is to die, whereas in ours, effort is often made to prolong life indefinitely. In some countries, women are excluded from political and commercial offices, while in others, they are positively encouraged to enter them. And these are not simply matters of taste, the relativist points out. Rather, each society deems its practices morally right. Furthermore, and most importantly, okay, the relativist claims that there's no way to adjudicate between the opposing claims. We have no basis for saying that one is better or more preferable to the other. Okay? And the reason for this, 
The reason that the relativist is going to point out that the Mongolian way of life and the American way of life, I can't ever make the claim the relativist points out of saying the American way of life is better, is more preferable than the Mongolian way of life for the fact that there's no way of measuring that. There's no way of objectively measuring that, right? There hasn't yet, and I mean, I know that maybe some would push back here, but again, the relativist claim, if this is what we're kind of running with it here, right? Like there hasn't been a deity, there hasn't been a God that has come down to say that the American way of life is objectively better than the Mongolian way of life, right? There hasn't ever been a God that has come down or gods that have come down to say the Mongolian way of life is more preferable and better than the American way of life. We don't have a metric, we don't have a system, we don't have an entity they can adjudicate, they can kind of help us decide which one is better or more correct or more right. Okay? The relativist concludes that the identification of particular disparate moral, system is, moral systems is as far as we can go in moral theory. In other words, the most we can say is that morality is a re relative to a particular society and culture. Now, on the face, that may seem okay. Some of you might say, yeah, great, cool. Right, right on. Yeah, it makes sense. Mongolian way of life, let them do what they're doing. American way of life, do what they're doing. Right? But I'm not so sure. Right? I don't think that a lot of us are actually that comfortable with just saying live and let live. Because that just, if we kind of, you know, go with the live and let live mentality, then that would mean that a lot of our beliefs are just relative to us, right? And I'm sure that many of us are, are uncomfortable by that, okay? All right. Um, all right, here we go. Although different societies obviously have different sets of customs, there are some moral claims, uh, blah, 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 blah. All right. Okay, so this is actually, I think, kind of, again, a main claim here of, of relativism that's, that's problematic. If relativism is right, okay, if relativism is correct, if morality is completely determined by a particular society's beliefs, then it becomes impossible to judge one society as better or worse than the other. In other words, if morality is relative and there is no overarching system, there is no overarching God that can, you know, uh, adjudicate or kind of decide if there is no if it pardon me if, the, if morality is relative and there is no overarching system by which to compare and evaluate different cultures then right we're unable to say from a morally independent objective standpoint that the genocide in Nazi Germany was wrong the most we may be, if we embrace relativism, there is no such standpoint. The most we may be able to say is that Hitler's Germany had a different morality than our own. We cannot say that it was a worse one. For again, the relativist's argument entails that there is no further system beyond each particular culture's morality. Okay? Now, I think this is troubling. I think this is troubling. I think this is difficult. Because again, if you, if you miss that there, the underpinnings of what's being claimed is the fact that like, if I claim to be a moral relativist, then I just have to accept, I guess if it were, that each culture, each society's, their practices are relative to their culture. And frankly, there's no way of like being able to adjudicate, there's no way of able to uh, decide, to engage, to be able to kind of, you know, say that one is better or worse than the other. And the example from the book here is I, if I'm a moral relativist, I can't claim, uncomfortably so, I think, but maybe that's just my own subjectivism, but if I'm a moral relativist, I cannot make the claim that, pardon me, I can't make the claim that 
that Nazi Germany was wrong for what they did. Right? I can't claim that Hitler was a bad person because these terms wrong and bad, again, are subjective because for Hitler and his regime, regime rather, right, what they thought they were doing was right. So all that I'm able to say here is that Hitler's Germany had a different morality than our own. I cannot make the claim that Hitler's Germany was worse than the morality that I have, that we as a collective in the United States have. Because the moral relativist is firm on this, there is no one concrete moral theory by which we gauge all other moral theories. There is no one deity or deities that have come down to say, yes, do this, yes, do that, no, don't do that, no, don't do that, right? We have various kind of theologies that have, again, kind of uh, differing opposing ways of how it is we ought to live, right? So even if we do turn to kind of like a religious outlook to try to kind of like help us navigate through the world, which many of us do, and that's fine and well, right? We also have to take into account that even our religious outlook might be in contradiction with another culture's, another culture's religious outlook, therefore, therefore falling into the same kind of difficulty <laughs> that we're in now with moral relativism, right? Is it the case that, that you know, uh, one's particular religion and one particular society is reflective of one particular's cultural beliefs? And that another particular theology, particular religion, and another culture is reflective of one culture's other beliefs? And if they're different, right? Is one right and one wrong? Is one wrong and one right? Or are we just ending up in relativism again? Okay? And we can't make the claim the relativist points out. We can't make the claim the relativist points out. That one religion is better, or, and this religion is worse, for the fact that there's nothing to be able to kind of measure that between, right? And we end up in, I think, some very uncomfortable positions. I think we end up in some very kind of um, positions that, that require serious attention, require serious thought. And I hope that kind of like in discussing this and kind of in thinking about it, it does allow you to examine your beliefs. It allows you to kind of question your beliefs a little bit more and kind of ask those questions well, am I justified? Where did I come up with this? Why do I believe what it is that I believe? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Now, as we move forward from relativism, and relativism, there's going to be a couple of thinkers that espouse a seemingly relativist outlook, but then there's also going to be some theorists and some ethical theories that, that seem to try to, like, you know, um, offer that one kind of um, outlook of, of moral certitude, of moral kind of objectivism, okay? And we'll make note when we get there and we'll be able to kind of see when we get there and, and, and how these theories do kind of respond to the relativist attacks. But relativism is tough. It's tough to refute. It's tough to, tough to, tough to, uh, tough to move on from sometimes. But now having a basis in it, having a familiarity with it, we can see what responses are to relativism and see if any of our various ethical theories that we'll examine this semester seem to offer a position or seem to offer an outlook that can kind of quell this relativist way of thinking. Okay? But also, if you're kind of persuaded by relativism, then you're persuaded by relativism. And maybe no objective moral theory will sway you from a relativist outlook. So, again, here we go. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is, I think, week number two, isn't it? Yeah, so we are we are rolling, and we are we are on our way. Uh, I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend. Hopefully, you think about your beliefs and why you hold them, um, and and uh, what it would mean to know that you were wrong, or to know that maybe somebody else has opposing beliefs when they're just as justified. Good luck. Oh, good luck.